Welcome to Connect Community. If this is your first time, my name is Alini. Um, it is always a pleasure to be with you guys. I'm excited to bring the word. I told JD I felt like this message downloaded pretty fast. It was a good, you know, sit down and write it all out at the same time. Which, guys, if you write messages, that doesn't often happen, okay? It takes time. It takes a lot of wrestling. And this time it came pretty fast, so I was excited about it. Um, it's part two of our Better Together series. If you've been following along, if you did not watch the first message I do or wasn't here last week, I do encourage you to go back into our website um, and watch the first message that JD brought, which was great, and it was a great opener so you'd understand what the series is about. Today we are going to start in 1 Corinthians 12. So if you have one of those paper Bibles, does anybody still carry a paper Bible? Some. We have some in the room with the paper Bible. Yes. We have to, like, you know, highlight the paper and that kind of stuff. You, you don't get that with the automatic. You click to highlight, it just doesn't feel the same. Anyway, paper Bible, bring it out, or your phone Bible, you can do that too. 1 Corinthians 12, we're going to start at verse 12 through 27. So it's a little bit of a longer read. So follow along on the screen if you'd like, or on your Bible, and uh, read with me. Just as a body, though one has many parts... But all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body. Whether Jew, Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they, are all, if they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I do not need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. I'm going to pray. Lord, I thank you that your word bears fruit wherever it goes. I ask this morning that as we share the stuff that I believe, God, you have placed in my heart, that you would speak to your people, the people you brought into this room today. I believe, Lord, you draw people unto yourself. It is the work of the Holy Spirit to bring them to use. So I just pray this morning that you would continue the work that you have already begun and that you'd begin it to bring it to completion, Lord. I thank you for your goodness and your grace that always follows us. In your name I pray. Amen. Okay. Now, have you ever used WebMD as a symptom checker? <laughs> See, I don't know. I know everybody has. I, I have four kids, as you guys, most of you know. And WebMD has been like a close friend, and the devil I categorically want to cast away. <laughs> right? So, hey, Google, I have a headache, a stomach ache, and a fever. What are, what are those symptoms of? <laughs> right? Dude, I kid you not. I did this. Okay. Swallowed bacteria. One, one thing that you could have. Maybe you have an irritation because you swallowed some bacteria. Perianal strep. <laughs> that came up. I'm not even going to explain that. Anxiety. Well, I'm anxious just listening to your answer, so sure, that's it too. Bowel problems, infections, mesen mesen 
Tarek Adenonitis. Where's my doctors in the room? I, okay, this is, this is a list for headache, fever, and stomach. And the list kept going. It is incredible that one part of the body could have so, a little ache here can have so many things that could be wrong. The list of ailments that I got was almost as long as the list of side effects on a drug commercial. You guys know those too. You know those commercials? Take this for acne, but side effects could, may include, but not limited to, <laughs> allergic reactions, skin rashes, itching, high swelling of the lips and tongue, throat, blurry vision, loss of hearing. I mean, I just wanted a cream for acne. <laughs> right? I mean, it's bad. It's, it's really bad. Sorry, I, I diverge, but it's just so interesting to me. Anyway, what's interesting is that if you have pain in one area of your body, you will quickly notice that it affects the entire body, yeah. right? Have you ever stubbed your toe? Yeah. One night of bad sleep causes your entire body to suffer the next day. I mean, anybody remember when the time changed? Or it's about to come again, right? We're about to time change, and all of a sudden the next day everybody's like, oh, God, God. that's one hour, and it affects the whole body. Now, we know this. Bad nutrition affects the whole body. Negative thinking affects the whole body. The body functions best when all its parts are working together. When all parts are healthy, that's when it functions its best. When I was pregnant, most of you guys know I, we have four children. Two of them are twins. And I was pregnant with the twins at about week 32. I developed a thing called, uh, known as cholestasis clo of pregnancy. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but what it is, it's a liver disorder that may happen when you're pregnant. And what happens is it's not, your liver is not processing things well. And I mean, I had no idea. I had no liver pain. I was, you know, everything was normal. Everything was looking normal, except that I had severe itching. Like, my belly seemed to be on fire. And it's kind of normal to have a little bit of itch, you know, you're pregnant, your belly's stretching when you're pregnant. But this was like, give me the, the thing, you know? Like, it was really, really. And so I, told, I ended up telling the doctor, like, this doesn't feel normal. It feels like this itching is really bad. And so they gave me the test, and it turns out I had developed that liver problem. The itching was a sign to, in my body that some other part of my body was not working well, was not uh, functioning properly, and that it needed some attention. One part was affecting the whole. I want you to note today that Paul chooses to use the body as an analogy for the church. So you think you come to here, um, wait a minute, I lost myself, guys. Yes, um, one part of the whole. And a, uh, Paul uses that, the body as an analogy. This is what he says. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body. Right? One body. All its many parts form one body. My friends, each and every one of us in this place, around the world, are part of something. We are a part of this body. There is the local body, the church, and then the body at large, the church at large, right? So we are a part, a part of one local body. And this implies three things, three things that I want to bring up to you guys today. One, you are a part of a whole. If you are a part of a whole, that means that there is a greater picture. There are other things. You are a part of something. Another way to look at it is that maybe you are a piece of a puzzle, right? If we stop to think about it, if we stop and we think about the church in that way, if we need to take then a look that it's not just about me. It's not just about what I need or what I want. We can often get stuck in the pattern of coming to church and thinking, what can this church offer me? What can I get from this? What are you feeding me? Right? We can come to church with a self-centered thought or mind process 
If we engage in community in that way, then we will produce side effects like those drugs and band-aid the actual problem, the actual ailment in our lives instead of finding the cure for it. If we take our presence in church as it's about me, again, we band-aid the issue in our lives instead of treating it as a whole and curing uh, the ailment in our lives. So uh, and I'll give you an example. Sometimes we say, okay, I need to go to church on Sunday. I need peace. I really need peace. And so I come into this place because this place has a presence of God. We, we pray for that. We pray that God would come in here and that you would be filled and that his presence would be felt and that you would find peace. And that is a great thing. But if you take it as I'm coming in here to get peace and then I'm leaving, then that peace will be temporary in your life. If you come in here to only get the peace and walk out and live your week and then come back the next week just to get the peace and walk out and leave again and not actually engage the part that you are meant to play, then that peace won't last you through the week. That peace won't last you in the, the storms of your life because it's, not a, it's one, only one part. It's only one part instead of the entire connection, the whole body. Do you get what I'm saying? If, however, we shift our thinking from me to we, then we begin to be a part of the whole thing. If we shift our thinking into what, am I, what are we building, what are we doing, what are we in this community doing, then we are a part of something much greater, and it shifts the, uh, the presence and the action of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Take a few steps back. Let me encourage you to take a few steps back and allow yourself to, instead of having a singular vision of me and what can I get, to why? Why? God, you have placed me in this community. The church has been granted a vision, a commission. The Lord has gifted this church, has granted this church with a vision for the local body. And God drew you here for some reason. We didn't go knock on your door. God drew you here for some reason. He confirmed it in your heart to be here. Why? Why here? Why you? Why now? Have you ever thought about why? Have you ever thought about why did you bring me here, Lord? Why am I here? Again, we, we need to, at some point, shift the, it's about what I'm getting to, what am I a part of? The second implication that we see in that scripture is that we, are, we have a part and the part, we have a role. The scripture says this, but in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is. There are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you, and the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. You, my friend, have a role to play. You are not here by accident, and you're not here to be an eyewitness. You are here because you belong. You are here because you are a member of the body. The Lord, in his infinite wisdom, before you were created, saw through time and decided that the world needed a you. So he drew you. He said, you will be a knee, you will be an ear, you will be a thumb. No, okay. You will be good with numbers, you will be good with words, you will be a thinker, you will make people feel seen, you will produce wealth, you will have a special ability to build buildings and, and see things come to life and lead others. See, he picked each and every one of you and designed each and every one of you with purpose. And if you don't believe me, I'll prove it to you. We can go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Chapter 12, verse 4, beginning at verse 4, it says this. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does the work in all of us. 
A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. To one person, the spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. And you thought you were smart. To another, <laughs> the same spirit gave a message of special knowledge. The same spirit gives great faith to another. And to someone else, the one spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles and another the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the spirit of God or from another spirit. Still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages, while another is given the opportunity to interpret what it is being said. It is the one and only spirit who distributes these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. You, my friend, have a spiritual gift. Did you know that? You have a spiritual gift, an ability the Lord has placed in you for what? For others, for his church, for his body. Have you ever wondered why you are the way that you are? I have. Why? <laughs> you know, I began to notice this a long, long time ago. I began to notice what God had placed in my life. I would sit down to have coffee with somebody, and for some reason, they would feel very comfortable and begin to open up their heart and share very intimate and very vulnerable things. And before I knew it, they were in tears. And the Lord was using that conversation to lead them somewhere, to lead them to an, an outcome. The Lord was using the conversation to shine a light on whatever was going on in their lives so that they could see what was the next step. Now, you have a gift as well, and you might not notice it because it's so natural to you. Sometimes when we are gifted in an area, we think, isn't that normal? Doesn't everybody do that or feel that or see that? And the truth is, no. Everybody doesn't. It comes natural to you because the Lord has gifted you. Maybe what is in your life is the gift of hospitality. You are able to create a warm and welcoming environment for people. And they come into your house and they just feel so comfortable and so home because you create that for them. And maybe your gift is intercession. You have this divine ability to pray and pray for a long time and pray for people and always lift people up and, and you feel their needs and you just lift them up for the Lord. That's a gift. Gift of intercession. Maybe your gift is administration. You're so organized it hurts me. <laughs> you know when the tasks and the things are all lined up and everything is perfect? That's a gift. You may have a gift and you haven't realized it, but the Lord has placed gifts in you and there are many other gifts. What I want you to remember today, though, is that all gifts are important and all are indispensable in God's house. God designed us to relate to one another using these gifts. He, he designed us to be able to relate, to support, to add value to others. And that's why he placed these gifts in our lives. The last impact that I want to, uh, the last implication I want to discuss today is what happens if you do not play your part? So you're like, okay, I have this gift, but I don't want to. Don't want to do it. I don't want to engage. I don't want to be a part. Well, I want to tell you this morning that if you don't play your part, we all miss out. All of us. As I look around this body, I can see that there are many gifts. I can see people that have gifts of craftsmanship and they're just so great with their hand and handiwork. And I see others who have the gift of speaking life and faith into others. I see people who are gifted in teaching and being able to explain difficult concepts and just break it down and help people understand. There are others that have the gift of service that can just take care of things. They see a need, they meet a need. Like, I got you. They can, they can problem solve and take care of it. I see the hand of God in many of you because I know you. And the creativity and the purpose that God has placed in each and every life. But I also see opportunities for craftsmanship in this community. I see few people that are deflated and that need somebody to speak faith into their life, to declare life and to walk alongside them. I see classes that need to be taught and connect groups that need to be hosted. 
I see a building that needs to be purchased and built, right? I see the needs of the community, and here's the thing. If you don't engage in your divine gifting, this church misses out. There are many parts of the body, and some parts of the body are in pain, and they need care. And maybe, just maybe, you are the care God sent. Just maybe you are the person God sent to answer someone else's prayer. Just maybe the gifting that God has placed in you is exactly what this church needs for it to go to the next level. If you do not engage in what gifting the Lord has placed in you, we all miss out. But I'm going to tell you something. We are not the only ones that miss out. You miss out. You miss out on seeing the Lord use you. You miss out on people's lives being changed and you being a part of it. You miss out on discovering things that the Lord has put inside of you for the gifting of others. You miss out. I mean, I can think of people in this building that did not know they had giftings and began to engage just by a prompting, just a thing inside. Like, you know what, I'm going to try. I'm going to do it because I feel like I have an in, a little, you know, little affinity for that. And talk about Susie. Susie came to us, right, I mean, right about a year when the church had started. She looked at JD and she said, I think I'm, I think I'm supposed to sing. <laughs> I think there's something there. I'm not sure. You can tell me no, because, like, at that point, she could have not even had a good voice. <laughs> Who knew? Right? But she said, she was like, I don't really know. I have never done this before, and I don't know why I'm saying it to you, <laughs> but I think I have, I'm supposed to sing. So she started to work on it. And look at what she is today. She's our worship leader. The Lord has used the gifting in her life. Because she dared to say, I don't really know all the details, and I don't know how this works, but I am willing to take that thing that is awakening in me and surrender it to God. I can talk about David. David has this, I mean, all the videos that are being created for us is the handiwork of David, who has creative eye and its ability to put these videos together and so excited and he looked up to JD he goes I'm in what do you need let's do it and he started to engage and we're seeing the fruit of it these are awesome videos with church mamas in them <laughs> I love it it is so funny I love it but he put he dared to say you know what I don't know if I have all the skills but I'm willing to engage in what I'm feeling like the Lord is calling me to. It is not about perfection. It is about submission. It's about saying, Lord, I don't know if I know how to do this, but I am willing to. If you place this gift in me, I am willing to engage. And you have your way. You do whatever you want to do with it. I want to strongly encourage you this morning to not allow the gift of God that is in you to lay dormant or for you to one day look back in your life and go, I could have done more. I could have engaged more. I want to encourage you not to miss out on the things that God has placed in you. Now, we have a way for you to discover. If you, have you ever taken a spiritual gifts test? Anybody? If you haven't, we're going to show you how. Today. <laughs> Only today, one of those infomercials. Today, but only today. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, if you take out your phone and you tap the back of your seat, the, the little tap, we have it, a link to a spiritual gifts test. And we're going to encourage you to tap that, have it on your phone, take it at home. It's 107 questions, guys. It, don't do that now because then I lost all of you. Uh, but you tap it, have it saved on your phone, you can go home and you take this test. It's going to take you, it's not going to take long because it's, it's an easy test to take. But it will take you a few minutes, you'll take your test, and at the end of the test, it will tell you your affinities. Those things that maybe you lean towards that are spiritual giftings that maybe you never realized you had. And I want to encourage you to, once you take that test, to do one of these with your phone, visually, and say, Lord, if this is in me, help me to use it. If you have placed this in me, 
Help me to engage. Don't let me leave this earth without using the gifts you have given me. Don't let me leave this earth without get offering back to your house, to your kingdom, the thing that you have placed in me to contribute. Make sure you surrender those things to the Lord and watch him use you. Now, I don't want to end this message before, taking, before um, pointing out one last thing in that passage, and I'm coming to an end. In that first passage we read, there is one last point that I think is very important. It says, on the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. I want to say this, friends, that all of us at one season or another will have a weaker phase in our life. We will have a season where we feel weak. We will have a season where we are struggling, where we feel like we just don't, I can't muster up enough strength to do anything. There's a season that maybe you're going through something and that you just feel weak. And I want to encourage us to do what it is asking us to do. To the parts that are weaker, we take care of, we present as honorable, we support. We, they're not dispensable because they're weaker. We are a body, and as part of the body, when I stub my toe, I do not cut it off because it's hurting me. When my head is hurting, I don't say, well, chop off the head. Right? In our body, when one of our members is hurting, we support. We find resources. We engage in a way to bring about healing and cure. We help one another find healing. See, we don't just say, my hand is in handing, so surrender it. This is for the youth in the room. My arm is in arming. That's how they talk. We don't just give up on our members when they're not functioning at high capacity. We support, we love, we encourage, we uplift, and we don't know if the Lord is using us to bring about healing in their lives, so we engage. Just because they're offbeat doesn't mean they're not worthy. Um, and so, as seasons come and go, and eventually... Like I said, all of us will find ourselves in different seasons. Some are stronger, some are weaker. Let's make sure that when those seasons come, we have each other's back. And let's make sure that we know that there is a community that is with us and that we are all better together.